we continue our study of the solar system now with consideration of uh, who's at the center. Is the Earth at the center of the solar system or is the Sun at the center of the solar system? So the, uh, the older ideas about the uh, solar system that it was uh, Earth-centered, geocentric, geo for Earth, and uh, after observations were correctly interpreted we find that we have a heliocentric, a sun-centered model. So we'll explore some of the uh, history uh, on how this uh, developed. So let's consider uh, a, an old Greek problem here, so Plato's homework. So if we have the Earth at the center and we have the sun moving around and we have the celestial sphere out here, um, Let's, let's think about, can this uh, match some of the observations that we have uh, at, our, at our disposal? Um, what would we see for the brightness of the stars as the year goes through uh, month by month? Well, is the Earth changing distance to these stars? I'll just put some random stars out here. And the answer is no. Earth is not changing distance, so we should see the stars at constant brightness, and that's what is observed. The stars uh, don't change their brightness because uh, we have a change, noticeable change in distance to the stars. So that implied that was interpreted as, uh, as saying that uh, we have a constant uh, position for the Earth at the center of the solar system. Um, Let's go to another slide here. We can talk about another aspect of this. So uh, a hypothesis might be that the sun is at the center of the solar system and the Earth moves in an orbit around the sun. In this model, if we have the stars laid out as shown here, the Earth would get quite close to this star and it should brighten up. And as it moves away from the star over here, this star should get dimmer. That's not observed. In addition, there's an effect called parallax that hopefully you read about, where if the uh, observer changes position, the nearby stars will shift back and forth um, as the Earth is moving around in its orbit. And that was not observed by the Greeks. So uh, they concluded that the uh, uh, Earth was at the center of the solar system. They concluded this model was wrong because the stars don't change brightness and because the stars don't shift on the uh, celestial sphere as the Earth moves in its orbit. Now, what actually is happening here is a bad assumption, a bad drawing. These stars are much, much, much too close to our solar system. The stars are huge distances away, and the fact that the Earth moves across its orbit during a year, uh, that extra distance is ignorable compared to the distance to the stars and the stars don't shift enough on the sky to be seen with the eye. However, telescopes can be used to, uh, to notice that the nearby stars do shift back and forth as the Earth moves in its orbit. So we'll get a little bit more on that uh, later. But this left us with a geocentric model due to the incorrect interpretation of what was observed a geocentric model. They thought the Earth was uh, at rest at the center of uh, the universe. Um, so geocentric for Earth-centered, heliocentric for the Sun-centered model. And the geocentric model was you know, in fully accepted for over 1500 years uh, until we had some better observations, really a telescope uh, around 1600 that we'll, uh, we'll talk about. Um, so let's go a little bit further with this. There was nice artwork with these geocentric models and a map of the Earth, Earth at the center, and you can see various labels for uh, yeah. the uh, uh, contents of the solar system uh, being set out here on their, their paths around the Earth. <clears throat> Another geocentric model, the Earth at the center, you know, the sun, various uh, positions out here, uh, the moon and Mercury and Venus and you know, the other planets uh, going on out. Uh, Saturn is the last planet that's seen with the eye, uh, unless you know where you're looking, but we'll get to that when we talk about Uranus in the solar system. Well, so we have this uh, broad idea, the Earth at the center, 
but there are some observations that have to be matched by this model, notably retrograde motion and a change in the brightness of the planets. So if we consider uh, Ptolemy's model here, this is a simplified view of Ptolemy's model of the solar system, Earth-centered, and then the planets, um, the planet moves on what's called an epicycle, a small circle. The center of the epicycle moves on a deferent, and the deferent is what is a circle centered on the Earth. And in actuality, in Ptolemy's more advanced model, the Earth isn't at the center here, just slightly offset. Um, but in this model, the faster motion occurs on the epicycle, and as the planet comes around here on this side, the planet would go into retrograde motion from the point of view of the Earth. Going to the right on the sky, if you remember, is retrograde motion. And you can set the, uh, the speed on the epicycle and the speed on the deferent to create retrograde motion. Also, the planets do get brighter when they're uh, on the opposite side of the Earth from the Sun. And we have this uh, brightness accounted for by the size of the epicycle. And that, again, could be played with and uh, made to match the change in the brightness uh, observed for the planet. So Ptolemy's model, we have, uh, it is true, it, Ptolemy's model will correctly, well, it will predict retrograde motion. It's not perfect. Um, but it is a, a working model that was uh, in vogue for a lot of years. And... Here's what happens with this uh, epicycle and deferent arrangement. The planets get these loops, loop patterns, and again on the uh, edge of the loop here, uh, we have the uh, retrograde motion taking place. Uh, another drawing here just showing you know, more details in Arabic, if you notice the, uh, the lettering around here. Um, there really was a decline in the Greek culture around 300 BC. And uh, the ideas of the Greeks were preserved by uh, Islamic astronomers. The Arab uh, culture uh, was a, a preserver of this knowledge and a leader in uh, more visual observations uh, in the early ADs. Um, and if you take a look at star names, you'll find that a lot of the stars have Arabic names to them. Al Debaran, for example, Altair. Uh, so we can't go into this too deeply, don't have the time, but the Arabic astronomy was an important link in the history of astronomy. Um, just bring out a little bit Occam's razor as far as uh, the development of scientific theories and ideas. Uh, Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is the best. We try to uh, Make things as simple as possible, but not too simple. It's kind of a uh, uh, oxymoron, but uh, it's it's a working principle. Uh, Occam's razor: the simplest explanation is the best. You don't try to make things overly complicated. Um, so let's go a little further here. Copernicus in the 1500s had a hypothesis. His hypothesis was the sun is at the center, and Copernicus did not have good observations that would prove this. But he, uh, he thought this model was the correct model. Um, Copernicus, if you notice here, these circles uh, are not the correct spacing for the planets in the solar system. Uh, Copernicus did not know that, uh, that information. Um, but again, nice artwork with the sun at the center and the planets here, Earth and Moon, uh, going around the sun. So that's a little introduction to the, the uh, distinction between heliocentric and geocentric. It was a misinterpretation of observations that caused the geocentric model to be accepted. In a future video, I'll talk about the observations that uh, brought the heliocentric model to uh, its deserved place of uh, the correct model of our solar system. So keep reading and asking questions.